Hello, my name is Neville Stein and I'm delighted to present to you my thoughts on innovation for Hort Science Online. Today we're here at NIAB filming for this video, the National Institute of Agricultural Botany here in Cambridgeshire. And this is a very fitting place for us to film my thoughts on innovation. We're at a centre that is really at the forefront of agricultural and horticultural research. This independent research institution has brought tremendous innovation to our sector. So I'm hoping you'll enjoy my thoughts today on innovation. You might have heard me talk at Smart Hort or perhaps read some of my articles in Horticulture Week where I talk about the fact that we live in a VUCA world, V-U-C-A. So we're living in times that are very volatile, they're uncertain, they're complex and they're ambiguous. But you know what, we've always been living in those times. It may feel very intense at the moment, but you know, let's just cast our minds back and if I think about perhaps, you know, my career, I've lived through four recessions there's been you know a global financial crisis you know if we think about perhaps in the 60s there was the cuban missile crisis these things were very volatile they were uncertain and they were complex and ambiguous my family before me my great great grandfather an economic migrant from germany lived in a vuca world so it's not new and it's something that we will need to live with herodotus said change is the only constant and we can be sure that as we move into the future the world will still be volatile uncertain and complex but in a sense i think that's great because what that really does is that breeds innovation in our businesses when you're in a very challenging business environment it might not feel that that time is good for you but you know what challenges can be exceptionally good for you as a business owner Typically, sometimes when we have a challenging environment, businesses have a real opportunity to gain some market share. They also have an opportunity, perhaps, to get cheaper factors of production, although that's not the case at the moment. And sometimes the return on investment can be much higher in a challenging environment. But I think principally for me, uh, the most important point about operating in a challenging environment is that it breeds innovation. One of my favourite stories to il illustrate how innovation is bred through extremely challenging times is the story of Apollo 13. You might be familiar with the film uh, where Tom Hanks plays Jim Lovell and you'll know if you've seen the film that as they're returning to Earth the CO2 levels are rising incredibly high to dangerous levels in the command module. And the people in NASA need to develop a CO2 filter with what is available in the command module. And they get a bunch of guys around a table and someone throw, comes in and throws loads of bits of kit on the table and says, make a CO2 filter out of that, including Tom Hanks's sock. The point I'm making here is that those really challenging times force us to innovate. So if we want to innovate in our businesses and organizations, how do we do it? I'd like to share with you 10 ideas that you can take back to the workplace to help you, your organization, and your staff innovate. Number one is remove collective blindness. In other words, be open to the fact that you will need to innovate. Number two, perhaps for me, is the most interesting, which is ensure that you have cognitive diversity in your business and organization. What I'm really saying there is, making sure that you have people that think differently from you. If you think about the people that you surround yourself with, you tend to surround yourself with people that think the same and think alike. I know that's happened to me in the past. And what tends to happen then if we want to innovate, we're surrounding ourselves with people that think the same. So we might be repeating the same old script. Why not bring people into your organisation that think completely differently? I think you'll be really surprised about how that would challenge your organisation and bring a lot of fresh thinking into your business and organisation. So, create some cognitive diversity. Third tip to help you bring innovation into the organisation is to challenge the status quo. In other words, you know, Challenge everything, even if it's working well, it doesn't mean to say that you can't improve that process or that system or that procedure by innovating. So 
challenge the status quo. Number four is be prepared to be challenged. And that means that really be open to the idea that someone in your organisation might have a better idea than you. You might not have all the answers, but the chances are that your staff that are perhaps you know, working on the shop floor or working in production facilities might have a great idea that they could use to innovate their processes and improve their job. So be prepared and open to be challenged. Number five, share information and practices. And you know we operate in a wonderful sector, the horticultural sector, which is incredibly friendly and very open. And you know, you will be able to go into other organizations and businesses, share information with them, obtain information from them. And it's that sharing information that will really enable us to innovate. Number six, explore accidental mistakes. Sometimes you'll do something in the workplace and you will make a mistake. But you know what? Consider that mistake. See how you might learn from it and see how you might explore the opportunity to innovate from that mistake. And that leads me nicely on to perhaps the seventh point, which is really be open to failure. One of the things that really holds us back in British businesses is our approach to failure. And if you want to read more about that, read Matthew Said black box thinking where he explores the fact that we need to be much more open to failure. We shouldn't punish failure because it's from failure that we really learn. And if we're going to innovate and take innovation seriously, we are going to fail quite a few times. But each time we fail, we're one step closer to getting it right. Number eight, use management tools to help you innovate. There's a lot of tools out there that you could use, such as lean management programs or Kaizen, that Japanese process or philosophy of continuous improvement. So explore those tools and see how they might help you implement the innovation process within your business or organization. Number nine, reward people. Your staff, if they're empowered to innovate, will come up with some great ideas. And make sure you reward them. You know, sometimes those rewards don't need to be big. It might be cinema tickets. It might be recognition in front of the whole team. But make sure that when people do innovate, you, you reward them. Because that reward will encourage them to innovate further. And particularly when you bring that in with tools such as Kaizen or continuous improvement, what will happen is that innovation will be a continuous process with your staff. And my final point, number 10, on how to create innovation in your, in your organization is to involve everyone. Absolutely everyone in your organization is capable of being involved in that process. There will be loads of people in your business that have some great ideas. So make sure you involve them all. And that's a complicated process and will involve communication from you. But you know what? There will be people there at whatever level in your business that have got some great ideas. So involve everyone. It's not just your responsibility as a leader or a manager in the business, but it should be every single person's responsibility to come up with innovative ideas to drive your organisation forward. Thanks for listening to my thoughts on innovation and it's been really a great opportunity for me to share them with you today. If you would like to know more information, do feel free to email me and I'd be very happy to send you a presentation or indeed send you the names of some great reading material that have really helped me as I've explored the subject of innovation. Thank you.